Hello, I'm Dawn. And I'm Louise. And we're here to talk about our new book, Making Every RE Lesson Count, which is published by Crown House Publishing, that's out this week. I think it's fair to say that we, this didn't quite go how we thought it was going to go, Louise, did it? No, it really didn't. Uh, we planned, we don't live very close uh, to each other, but we planned to meet up every now and then and write a chapter remotely and send it to each other. But little did we know what the year would bring and we've literally spent the whole year on a Zoom call together and you've just become my Zoom buddy over the course of the last 12 months. It's been amazing. Yeah, it has actually. And I think it's actually contributed to both of our personal teaching practice as well as we've gone along because it's given us time to kind of think about what we do and talk to other people along the way. Yeah, I think the conversations that we've had on Twitter and on the RE Facebook groups about what uh, RE is like and what RE is today has really been the foundation of what we've been writing about. Making Every Lesson Count, the original, has six chapters and we have followed that those principles, those core, six core principles in our book, Making Every RE Lesson Count. Challenge is, is really important and we have got the most challenging stuff to talk about in our subject and I think we're really fortunate in that because challenge is integral to everything that we do. It, it unlocks all that important aspects of what it means to be a human, uh, cultural and intellectual life and I think we've been just really fortunate we've been able to talk about that. Explanation and questioning are two chapters that are so important in our subject. It's full of stories and imagery and analogy and we start thinking about what it means to get students to think really hard about what they think about life, it's life itself, but also what other, other people think and, and how they can formulate their own arguments. The chapters of modelling and practice, they pull together the complex concepts that our students need to develop. Learning is really complex and our students need to develop their own schema so that they can really understand stuff for the long term. We're not talking about learning things fleetingly. We want to change people's lives and what, we're, what they're learning. And feedback, we talk about what makes good feedback and how we can make that effective, giving practical ideas that you can pick up and you can use in the classroom. We've tried really hard to write a book that's full of practical activities that you can try tomorrow, but also one that's underpinned by evidence about what works. Yeah, I think that's really important. And that probably what makes our book slightly different from others is that it's based on research, but also it's up to date in talking about the current discussions in RE about it being multidisciplinary and this idea of teaching students that we're looking through lenses when we're learning in RE. And I think that's the kind of that's the thread that we wanted to go throughout the book using the six principles underpinning that along the way. At the beginning of our book, we wrote this. Religious education is in a period of transformation. As well as recognising its interdisciplinary nature, a potential name change, national entitlement and legal changes are all being considered. We hope that our book will be part of a wider discussion about the subject and its curriculum. We are inviting you to join with us in that transformation. We, the teachers in the classroom, are at the forefront of change. Let's go.